Let's talk briefly about how you can apply your skills for sketching transformations of functions to sketch transformations of tangent x. So let's say you're given the graph of tangent x and I want you to sketch four minus tan pi over three x. This is gonna be a pretty mechanical process and it's going to be kind of the same as uh, ones that you did for sine and cosine. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna start with uh, just part of the graph that has some features that are features that you care about. And then you'll ask yourself what transformations are happening here and how do those transformations affect this point in the middle? How do they affect the asymptotes on either side? And you'll sketch a new box where the box itself has been kind of transformed. And then once you know how this box maps to a new location, you can fill in the rest of the graph based on that box. So I'm gonna look at vertical transformations first and then horizontal ones. You could do the other way around um, because you can consider them independently of each other. Uh, the vertical transformations, I see the opposite of tangent. So that's like a vertical flip. And I see four, which is like a vertical shift by four. So if it helps you to visualize the steps one at a time, um, I made like a little tiny picture of my box and then there's tangent. So first I'll do a vertical flip, then I'll shift it up by four. Last, I'll need to think about this horizontal transformation where I'm scaling it horizontally. Uh, you may not remember talking, well, so you remember from last year that the horizontal transfer transformations have the opposite effect from the one that you feel like they probably should have. Um, and the reason why that is, is because you're transforming the coordinate system before you actually uh, evaluate the function. Um, and we'll talk again, we'll, we'll talk about this repeatedly because it's a difficult concept to understand fully. Um, but a, a nice way of thinking about it, let's compare it to something that's very familiar. Here we see that subtracting to inside the function is a right shift. And why is it a right shift? Well, you know that for the original function, the vertex, the vertex happens when the input is zero. So if you think about what input could I give here that would evaluate to be zero before I send it through the function, you can see that when x equals two, that's what cancels out this, or that, that's what kind of undoes this subtracting two. So two is the unique input that's gonna give me uh, an input that acts as my original input that created the vertex acted as. Was that a complete sentence? Let's try this again. We want an input uh, that's going to act like the old input zero. So what input acts like the old input zero? Whatever input is going to result in zero when you apply that kind of inside transformation. So similarly, we've got that for our parent function, uh, a special feature is happening when the input is pi over two. So when we're considering our transformation, we wanna ask what input is going to act like pi over two? Or in other words, what input can we give where when we evaluate it, it's gonna result in pi over two? Because that's the input where our interesting feature is going to show up. So you can actually, so you could either do this in your head or you could write it algebraically. I'm saying what X value gives me pi over two when I multiply it like this. So I could say pi over three times my x value needs to give me pi over two, and then just solve for the x value that makes that true. So I'm undoing the process of the multiplication. So let's uh, multiply by three and divide by pi. I said multiply by three, divide by pi, so that gives me this. The pi's divide to be one, and so now I have x equals three halves. So what that means is when I plug in three halves, all the cancellation occurs and I get pi over two as the input to tangent. So that means when x is three halves, that's where my vertical asymptote is gonna show up. All right, so we had before the width of the box was pi because I was going from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Now I'm going from negative three halves to positive three halves. So that's a new width of three. So I think it's time to draw the final sketch. Let's start with where all of these dots that used to be at zero end up. So they all got shifted up by four. So let's draw some dots. Or let's, uh, I guess let's just draw our one box here. So I've got a dot there. 
and I know that it's been flipped upside down. So it's gonna look something like this. Um, what about the asymptotes? I know that the asymptotes now are happening at regular intervals of three. So this is three halves. This would be, uh, whoops, sorry, not five halves. It'd be nine halves. And then adding another three would be 15 halves. And there we go. Um, so not, you know, not the best sketch in the world. Um, and I'm not, you know, like when we really care about this stuff, you can use Desmos to graph. It's more practice seeing if you can think your way through a lot of details. Like, can you organize a process for yourself where there are a lot of uh, little things to keep track of? Because that by itself is kind of a nice skill to be able to do. As a quick test of this process, um, if you want to try and sketch this full graph, you can. This is the graph of cosecant x, or part of it. Um, I want you to try and sketch the graph of y equals cosecant negative pi over 2x minus 1. Um, but for the purposes of this video, um, I just want to do like a quick check. So could you tell me this point A that's at pi over 2, 1, uh, where does it end up after you apply this transformation? Where does it get mapped to? Okay, so here the vertical uh, transformation is easy. We're just shifting down by one. So this point A that used to be at one, the Y coordinate is now gonna shift down to be zero. Um, for the horizontal transformations, I see a negative sign. So that means I'm reflecting it horizontally. So pi over two is gonna reflect over here to negative pi over two, but I'm also scaling it. Um, so I'd said, here's a nice way of thinking about it. I know that point A happens at pi over two. So what X coordinate could I plug in where it's gonna give me pi over two as an output when I do the multiplication? And pretty clearly, if X equals negative one, that's the input that will give me pi over two when I do the multiplication. So what that means is that horizontally, uh, the coordinate a that used to be at pi over 2 is going to get mapped to an x-coordinate of negative 1. So what does that mean for the box? So I'll take this box that used to go from 0 to 1 here, and the point at 0 gets shifted down, the point at 1 gets shifted down, and then we also said it, it reflected, and then the x-axis scale changed. So the point a, I said, ends up at negative 1, 0, so there's the point A. And I know that the width of the box, uh, here the width was pi, and pi over two is right in the middle. A got mapped to here, and so I know the, the new width of my box is two. And that lets me sketch in the missing part here. So what am I gonna do for the rest of the graph? Remember the original pattern is this kind of alternating up and down and up and down. And uh, if this is at one, to find this thing that sort of looks like a vertex, I would go down by two because it used to be that these are kind of symmetric around zero. So if the whole thing got shifted down, what used to be at one is now at zero. And what used to be at negative one is now at negative two. So I can sketch that one here, this one here, that one there, where these are all at negative two. And that's what the final answer looks like. I hope that this was helpful.